Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Science Hive. The goal of Science Hive is to take all the fascinating and amazing science out there, specifically in the field of biology, and spread it to everyone. There's a lot of ways that we can look at science, and I'll be trying to use a wide variety. We're looking at big picture concepts like what exactly is a cell, what's genetic testing, how do antibiotics work. We'll also be looking at science in the media. So things like reading news about science, how you can tell what it really means, and how to tell if it's good information. We'll also be looking at some of the more technical ways that science is conveyed through professional journal articles and try to unpack some of the research in those. Finally, and this is a big one, I want you to ask questions. Questions are a huge part of how science works, so if there's something that you want to learn, maybe an idea you've heard, something you learned in school and didn't understand, or maybe just don't remember, or maybe a news article that you read, send it all my way and give me your questions. Alright, enough housekeeping. I want to kick off this channel about biology topics by talking about what is at the heart of it all. Life. Biology is the study of everything alive. And intuitively, you probably know the difference between something that's alive, like a cat, and something that isn't, like a cookie. But at a scientific level, what do we mean when we say something is a living organism? Before we start, it's important to remember that these traits are descriptive. Scientists observed over time and found what organisms had in common. It is not prescriptive, meaning scientists didn't make a list and then see what fit. Like all good science, these are based in observation. Alright, so what are the things that we found to be common in living things? First, organization. You can't just take a pile of proteins and fats and call it an organism. There has to be some level of organization, in some way that that's structured. Number two, metabolism. Metabolism means the organism takes in nutrients and uses them. It's closely tied to number three, which is growth. Now growth doesn't just mean getting bigger, like blowing up a balloon. It also means that the organism grows and develops. Number four is homeostasis. It's a big word, but all it means is staying stable on the inside. So it's snowing outside my house right now, but if I went outside in shorts, my body would find a way to keep myself warm, probably by shivering. Number five, response to stimuli. If I hand you a cup of bleach, you're probably gonna cringe from the smell. And if I put a drop of a toxic chemical in a plate by an amoeba, it's going to try to move away. So, at any size or any complexity, organisms are going to respond to the things that happen in their environment. Number six is reproduction. This one's pretty simple. All organisms need a way to make more of themselves. So if it's alive, it has some way to reproduce. Last is adaptation. Adaptation means the organism adapts to the environment around it, and that continues over time. Adaptation is the basis for how organisms evolve. And that's it. Those are the seven traits that something has if it's alive. Let's see how the cat and the cookie stack up. The cat is definitely organized with lots of different structures. She has a metabolism and takes in food and processes it. She also grows and has gotten much bigger since being a kitten. She has homeostasis and has a lot of ways of keeping her insides stable even when the outsides change. She responds to stimuli, sometimes not so happily. Although moths can't have her own kittens, cats can reproduce. Cats over time have also adopted a lot, especially as they've become domestic instead of wild. We can definitely conclude the cat is alive. Okay, let's look at the cookie. Cookie is organized definitely, but it doesn't have a metabolism, doesn't grow, doesn't maintain homeostasis, it doesn't respond to stimuli, it doesn't reproduce. In fact, now there's less of it. And finally, cookies have changed over time, but I don't think we can call it adaptation. So what we thought was true in the beginning, we now know from looking at the science. That's all for today. Thanks for watching Science Hive. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to subscribe. Also, remember to send me your questions. Take your pick of YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr, and send those questions my way. Thanks for watching. Bye!